And so it just means that parents have got to be a little bit more flexible and pliable, uh, more fluid to move in and out of those things, to have more discussions rather than lectures, to let our kids make decisions rather than us making all the decisions for them, to teach them how to flex those decision-making muscles so they're strong enough to hold and to pick up the very things they're going to have to pick up in the world that they're going to live in one day. I am so glad you're here because I got six kids. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, maybe we can help. You've been a parenting expert. You've been parenting teens, teaching others for so long. What are some of the most common questions that parents are asking today? You know, I, I mean, it's interesting. I, I live with 65 high school kids. I mean, and so I hear the Your wife questions. must be exhausted. I know. She's worn out. I mean, she's worn <laughs> out. But, I mean, we have a residential counseling center, and so I get to hang out and spend time with these kids, and, and they live with us for about a year. And, and the interesting part of it is we hear the questions over and over and over again, and it continues to shift continually. It used to be uh, more drugs and fentanyl and opioids, and now it moves to gender issues and and my, my child says they're gay, my child says they're pansexual. They're, you know, so people are asking those questions. It, you know, there's, the, it, it seems to move with whatever is getting attention in the culture. And so because we know that it always moves, then we know it's going to change. And in six months, it's going to look a little bit different as well. And so we're not afraid of those changes. I mean, I, I, I really believe that, that, that everything is going to move. We're going to talk about tattoos for a while. Then we're going to be talking about, you know, eating and uh, disorders that somebody has. And we're going to talk about anxiety and depression, and they'll go in waves. But there's always something about those issues that kids are dealing with that, that they, they do go in waves. And just as a wave comes in, a wave hits the sand, and it disperses, but there's always another one coming. And so I think that's where, mm. that, that's where those questions always change. So right now, today, it is, it is issues about opioids and fentanyl and, and depression and anxiety and gender issues are huge. Probably 30, 40% of the calls that we get from parents are saying, hey, my kid says they're this. What are we supposed to do? And, and that becomes a very difficult stage for parents to, to walk through. How do I take the biblical principles that I know to be true and apply them to this world that seems to be spinning out of control a little bit, which it's not because it's another wave, but how, how do I take those things that I believe and apply it to a culture that's very difficult for our kids? So the waves come in, they crash on the sand and they go back out. This time it's a tattoo wave. Next time yeah, it's a yeah. gender issue wave. I find that interesting, by the way, when we're talking about identity issues, how, how that can be trending today, but it wasn't trending before if it's actually something that is innate within our, yeah. our, our psyche and our DNA and our makeup. Uh, it sounds a little more trendy to me and temporary and transitory to me than an identity issue. Yeah, it is. You know, and, and I mean, tattoos have been around a long time. I mean, they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, gender identity issues have been around for a long time. I mean, mm. all these things have been there. Anxiety and depression have been around a long time. But I think at the core of it with kids, and that's, that's who I focus on more than anybody else, is that the lack of relationships that these kids uh, are experiencing, they don't have relationships. And we know that from relationships, the relationship that you and I have, I get value, I get a sense of correction, I get, you push me to maturity, you, you challenge my thoughts. I mock thoughts. you. You mock me I mean, all, all the time. All the you make fun of my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's a love language. It, sarcasm is a man's love language. And so, I mean, so, I mean, you can do that with a sense of love and a sense of relationship, but our kids aren't getting that. And so what that means is they're trying desperately to have that relationship. I mean, you see your kids on a phone all the time, right? I mean, they're constantly on a phone. What they're trying to do is to fulfill the very thing that God has created them for, and that is to have a relationship with somebody because they don't have it any other way. The problem is it's not working. And so that's where you get this anxiety and depression. That's where you get kids that aren't growing up because they're not being challenged. American Medical Association has increased the age of adolescence to age 27. The American Journal of Adolescent Psychiatry has increased it to age 26. 26? Can you believe that? Is an adolescent? That's right. And that's because they don't have the relationships. Just as iron sharpens iron, so shall one man sharpen the other. But if you don't have that other man there, that other woman in your life, that other person to help you sharpen who you are, 
then you're not going to grow up. And that's why we have a group of kids that are trying everything they can to get attention and to build relationships. That's why they'll come up with all these crazy ideas and crazy thoughts. Whatever is on the market, they'll take it and run with it to connect with somebody else. They want to connect more than anything else. Mark, unless you're just an off-the-wall bad parent, you want a relationship with your kids. Yeah. yeah. You want to see them happy. You want to be in fellowship with them. But yet you have 65 high school kids living with you every year who have parents who probably want a great relationship oh, they do. with them. What are they missing? Why aren't they able to connect with their kids? God, what a great question. What a great question. I, I think some of the ways are antiquated. And, and, and I, I want to make sure that, that it's understood that I'm not saying that, that the biblical principles that we base our parenting skills on are antiquated. They are not. Our skills may be. It's like we're taking the very things that we hold to be true, the values that we embrace, those principles that we have, we have said, this is what I believe, this is what I want. But we're trying to apply it to a culture in ways that maybe don't work anymore. It's almost like the tools that we use during the earlier years of our preteen's life, we think that those are going to work during the teen years. For example? Well, I, I mean, we really think if we continue to make decisions, if we continue to uh, assume responsibility. If, For our kids. Yeah, that's right. If we continue to lecture all the time. if we Protect continue, them from dangers. That's right. Teach them all the time rather than training them. If we go back to the ways where we were rewarded, these shirts that said, world's greatest mom and world's greatest dad, and we think, I've got this. I'm a great parent. And then they hit adolescence and things begin to change. We've got to change the way that we engage with them, not the principles that we've founded our, our beliefs on, but the way that we engage so that we're not just teaching them anymore. We are training them in new ways. We're training up a child like this. Our world is full of information. When you and I grew up, information turned over every 13 years. Now it's turning over doubling every hour and a half. Next year, it'll be instantaneous. Our kids are bombarded with information. Mm -hmm. And they're bombarded with information because of these things. Because I now hold the, the Library of Congress in my hand. And, and so I have access to everything. So if a parent is just sharing information, kid doesn't want that anymore. They want wisdom. And they want the wisdom of how do I take the very things that I've been taught and apply them to a culture that is hard for me. And I think that's where parents miss it sometimes, is that they think these old ways are gonna do it, but the world's changed so much. And, and, and just as it's changed a lot in the last two or three years, it's gonna change again in the next two or three years, and the next two or three years, and it's gonna speed up. And so it just means that parents have gotta be a little bit more flexible and pliable, uh, more fluid to move in and out of those things, to have more discussions rather than lectures, to let our kids make decisions rather than us making all the decisions for them, to teach them how to flex those decision-making muscles so they're strong enough to hold and to pick up the very things they're going to have to pick up in the world that they're going to live in one day.